Good day, math learners! I'm back! In this topic, we will tackle first the loss of exponents for multiplication. In multiplying polynomials using the distributive property, you will apply the loss of exponents for multiplication. So, loss of exponents for multiplication is very useful in doing or multiplying polynomials using the distributive property. Okay. Product of powers. The first law of exponents. Product of powers is when multiplying two powers with the same base, just add the exponents like this. If a, M, and N are real numbers. A raised to M times A raised to the exponent N, and that is equal to A raised to the exponent of M plus N. So it means that, that their exponent is added because they have the same base. I will give you an example for that. Factors, writing the factors, writing the product using the exponent. Factors, 3 squared times 3 cubed. In writing the factors, that is, for 3 squared, that is 3 times 3. For 3 cubed or 3 exponent 3, that is 3 times 3 times 3. When you, uh, when you sum up all the number 3, that is, uh, have... Five threes. So that will be three raised to the exponent of five. Or when we use the the power law, we will add the two exponent, which is two plus three. You can add the exponent. It's because it has the same base. Two plus three, and that is five. Okay. Again. 2 plus 3 and that is equal to 5. They have, uh, it is, their base is R the same. That's why we can add the exponent. Or 3 exponent of 5, when you simplify that, that is 243. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Second example. M raised to the exponent 3 times M raised to the exponent 4. Writing the factors without the exponent, M raised to 3, that is M times M times M, times M raised to 4, it, it could be M times M times M times M. Writing the product using exponents, when you count all M here, letter M here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 M. So, that will be your exponent is 7. Or, you can use the law of, law of exponent, the first law of exponent. They have the same base, same base M. And you will just add all their exponents. Or you will add the exponent 3 and 4. 3 plus 4, and that is 7. Third example, 4 raised to 5 times 4 raised to the exponent of 2, or 4 raised to 2. So writing the factors without exponent, 4 raised to 5, that is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. 4 raised to 2, 4 times 4. So if we count, all the number 4 here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 fourths. So, the, your exponent is 7. If we use the law of exponent, they have the same base, as you can see, 4, 4 here. So, 4, it means that you will add all the exponent, 5 and 2. 5 plus 2, that's why the exponent is 7. 
4 raised to 7. When you simplify 4 raised to the exponent 7, that will be 16,384. Second, the power of a product. That is the third law of exponents. Power of a product is you will just simplify any power of a product simply multiply the exponent outside the parenthesis to each exponent inside the parenthesis if a m and n are all real numbers a b quantity a b raised to the exponent n you will uh, it the exponent n will be distributed to a and to b so that's why a and uh, that's why i mean and that is equal to a raised to the exponent n times b raised to the exponent n example number one factors writing the factors writing the product using exponent example number one quantity 4x squared y raised to the exponent 3 so to our third law of exponent you will substitute the exponent 3 so you substitute the exponent 3 so 3 will be substitute to 4 the exponent 3 will be substitute to x squared the exponent 3 will be also substitute to y okay but when you're doing writing the factors without exponents you can do 4x squared y 4x squared y 4x squared y or 4xxy times 4xxy times 4xxy Writing the product using exponents. So, 4 Q X 6. Because the exponent to exponent will be multiplied. 3 times 2, that's why 6. Y. The exponent of Y has 1. 1 times 3, that's why 3. A squared B cube raised to the exponent 2. So, you will substitute the exponent 2 to a and also to b so you will multiply their exponents in writing the factors without exponent you can do a squared b cube a squared b cube or a a b b b times a a b b b writing the product using exponents so a squared raised to 2 so 2 times 2 that is a 4 3 times 2 for b 3 times 2 that is 6 so the answer is a raised to the exponent 4 b raised to the exponent 6 number 3 3 m raised to the exponent 3 and raised to 4 quant close parenthesis raised to the exponent 2 so you, still you will substitute the value of 2 here first to 3 next to the letter m to m next to n so if we write that without using exponent this will be 3 m cube n 4 times 3 m cube n 4 or 3mmm n n n n times 3mmm n n n n so when you write that the product using exponents so when you substitute 2 to 3 so 3 squared that will be 3 raised to 2 m cubed times 2 that is m raised to 6 n raised to 4 times 2 that is n raised to the exponent 8 and that will be our answer mm -hmm. let's go on to power of a power that will be the fifth law of exponents 
the second and the fourth law that will be found in the division. But we are talking first the multiplication. Power of a power is you will simplify any power of power. Simply multiply the exponents. Again, simplify any power of power. Simply multiply the exponents. If A, uh, M, and N are real numbers, A raised to M, I mean quantity A raised to M, raised to N. So equals to A, A M times N. Okay. Example, factors 2 squared, I mean, or 2, quantity 2 squared raised to the exponent of 3. Writing the factors without exponent, 2 squared times 2 squared times 2 squared. Or, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Writing that in, uh, writing the product without using the, or using, I mean using the exponent. So if we use the fifth law of exponent, it says that you will multiply their exponent. So, 2 times 3 and that is 6. And your answer is 2 raised to the exponent of 6. Or when you simplify that, that is 64. Second, m raised to 3 or quantity m raised to 3 raised to the exponent of 3. M cubed times M cubed times M cubed. Or M times 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 M. If we use the law, the fifth law of exponent, it says that you will multiply the exponent. 3 times 3, that is 9. So M raised to the exponent of 9. Third example, 7 raised to the exponent of 3 raised to 2. Mm -hmm. When you write that without the exponent, 7 cubed times 7 cubed, 7 cubed or 7 to the exponent of 3, or 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. When you rewrite that or when you use the fifth law of exponent in writing the product using exponents, you will multiply their exponents. 3 times 2, that is 6. So the exponent is 6 and the base is 7. So therefore, the final answer is 7 raised to the exponent of 6. Hello, math learners! Today, we'll talk about multiplying rational expressions. But before that, let us review first how to multiply fractions. Okay? So, we have here 24 over 54 times 12 over 9. Okay, let's take first 24 and find the prime factors of 24. So, 24. Now, factors of 24, okay, it can be 2 times 12. Now, 2 is already prime, so put a mark that 2 is already prime. Now, for 12, okay, factors of 12, we can have 3 and 4. So, okay, now 3 is already prime, so put a mark for 3. But 4 is composite, so factors of 4, we have 2 times 2. Now, 2 is already prime. So we are down with our prime factors of 24. So let's write them. We have 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. Okay? Now let's go to 54. Let's have the prime factors of 54. Okay? So factors of 54, we can have 
6 and 9. 6 times 9 is equal to 54. 6 is not a prime number. It's still composite. So, you still have to factor this out. So, factors of 6, you have 2 and 3. Now, 2 is prime and 3 is also prime. So, you're done with 6. Now, let's go to 9. Factors of 9, we only have 3 and 3. Now, 3 is already prime. So, we are down with the prime factors of 54. So, let's write them down. So, you have 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Next, let's go to the prime factors of 12. So, we have 12. Now, 12 can be 6 times 2. So, let's use that. So, you have 6 times 2. Okay? 2 is already prime, so put a mark for 2. And 6, factors of 6, we have 2 times 3. 2 is prime, 3 is prime. So the prime factors of 6 are 2 times 3 times 2. Now, since we know that when we multiply fractions, we just have to multiply numerator by the, numer by the numerator and denominator by the denominator of the other fraction. Right? So, we can just continue writing here the factors of 12. So, you have 2 times 3 times 2. And for 9, factors of 9, we have 3 and 3. 3 is prime already. So, factor... Okay, let's write here. Continue writing here the factors of 9. We have 3 times 3. Right? So now that we have already um, identified the prime factors of our uh, numerators and denominators of the fractions, now we can divide out common factors. So we have um, one pair of two here, so let's divide them out, and then one pair of three. We have here another pair of 3. Okay? So, inspecting your prime factors, there are no common factors anymore. So, let's continue. In your numerator, you are left with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over, okay, 3 times 3 times 3. Now, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. So the numerator now is 16. And 3 times 3 is 9 times 3, 27. So now we already have here the product of 24 over 54 and 12 over 9. And that is 16 over 27. All right? Next, let's have 15 over 8 times 8 over 30, okay? So let's, okay, prime factors of 15, we have 3 and 5. 3 is already prime, 5 is already prime. So let's write it here now, 3 times 5. And then for 8, let's have the prime factors of 8. So 8 can be 2 times 4. 2 is already prime. 4, 2 times 2. Now 2 is already prime also. So the prime factors of 8 are 2 times 2 times 2. Now here, okay, we still have 8. So let's not repeat the process. Let's just um, write. The, fact, the prime factors of 8, so you have 2 times 2 times 2. And for 30, now 30 can be 3 times 10. Now 3 is prime, but 10 is composite. So factor out 10, you have 2 times 5. Now 2 is prime, and 5 is also prime. So the prime factors of 30 are 3 times 2, times 5, ok? 
Okay? Now, let's divide out common factors. So, we have here one pair of two, another pair of two, another pair of two, one pair of three, and one pair of five. Right? So, there's no common factors left. So, let's continue. Now, notice that in your numerator, all of your all of the factors are already divided out. Therefore, we'll write it as 1 over, okay, we have here 2, so that's 1 half. Meaning to say the product of 15 over 8 and 8 over 30 is 1 half. So let's box our final answer. So that's 1 half. Now, there are different ways on how to multiply fractions. Okay, you may directly multiply 15 and 8, 8 and 30, and then simplify your fraction, and then we're still able to come up with the same answer. However, the beauty of using prime factors is that after we divide out, we are sure that our final answer is already the answer in its lowest term. Alright, so... For the rest of the examples, if we can, then we should use prime factors. Alright? So, let's proceed to multiplying rational expressions. So, we have here x squared over 10 times 5 over x cubed. Okay? So, still the same process. Find the factors of x squared. So we know that the factors of x squared are x times x. Okay? And here, factors of 10, prime factors of 10, so that's equal to 2 times 5. 2 is already prime. 5 is already prime. So prime factors of 10, we have 2 times 5. And then, okay, factors of 5. Now 5 is a prime number. So, just write it right away. And factors of x cubed, we have x times x times x. Okay? Now, since we are done with all our prime factors, then let's divide out common terms. Common factors. So, we have here one pair of x, another pair of x, and... A pair of 5. So we see here that our numerator, all of the factors in our numerator are divided out already. So that would be equal to 1. Okay. Over, okay, for the denominator, we are left with 2 and x. So that would be equal to 2 times x. Multiply the denominator, you have 2x. And that is already our final answer. So, the product of x cubed, x squared over 10 times 5 over x cubed is 1 over 2x. Next, let's have this example. b cubed over 2c cubed times 4c squared over 3ab. Okay, so let's take first um, five, uh, b cubed. So, factors of b cubed, alright, we know that that is b times b times b. Now, factors of 2c cubed, now 2 is already prime, so we will write 2. Now, c cubed is just equal to c times c times c. Now, for 4c squared, so, 4c squared, 4 is composite, so let's have the prime factors of 4, which are 2 and 2. And 4c squared, that's equal to c times c. So, the prime factors of 4c squared is 2 times 2 times c times c. 
and the factors of 3ab, 3 is already prime, so just write it. And AB, that's just equal to A times B. Okay? Next, divide out common factors. So we have here one pair of B. One pair of C. Another pair of C. One pair of 2. And nothing else. So we are left with... B times B times 2 over C times 3 times A. Now, B times B times 2 is equal to 2B squared, right? And for the denominator, C times 3 times A. It's equal to 3ac. Now remember class that when you write a monomial or a term with 3 or 2 or more variables, then make sure that your variables are arranged in alphabetical order. So instead of writing 3ca, write, the proper way of writing it is 3ac. Okay? So that's it. We are already done. That's the product of b cubed over 2c cubed times 4c squared over... Let's have here example 3. Find the product of 4xy over 3 and 15x squared over 2y. Okay? So since both of our fractions have numerators and denominators that are monomial, so... We can just simply answer this through prime factorization. So find the prime factors of 4xy. Okay, prime factors of 4, we know that that is 2 times 2. And then x times y. Okay, so for 3, 3 is already a prime number. So just write 3 right away. Now, for 15x squared, 15x squared, factors of 15, we have 3 and 5. Now, since 3 is already prime and 5 is already prime, so the prime factors of 15 are 3 and 5. And factors of x squared, we have x times x. So, let's write it here. 3 times 5 times x times x. Now for 2y, at first glance, we know that the, that the factors of 2y are 2 and y. Okay, so now that we are done with listing all the prime factors, let's divide out common factors. So we have here one pair of 2, one pair of 3, and one pair of y. So Looking at our numerator, we can see that we are left with 2 times x times 5 times x times x over, okay, notice that all of our factors in the denominator are all divided out. So, that would be equal to 1. So, multiply now. 2 times 5, that's 10 x times x times x, that's x cubed, over y. So, since the, the denominator is already 1, so we can just write our final answer as 10 x cubed. Right? So, the product of 4xy over 3 and 15x squared over 2y is 10 x cubed. All right, next. Okay, so we have here number four. 2 over a plus b 
times 3 over a plus b. Now, whenever you see this kind of given, for example, either of the numerator and denominator, if it's composed already of two or more terms, then multiply the numerators by the numerator, denominator by the, by the denominator right away. Okay? Knowing also that our denominators are prime binomials. So we have here, okay, numerator by numerator. So you have 2 times 3. So that would be equal to 2 times 3 over, okay, a plus b times a plus b. Okay, so... 2 times 3, that's 6. And a plus b, okay, times a plus b, so that would be equal to a plus b squared, right? Now, expand your binomial. So, you have here 6 over a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, and once you are done, that's already the product of 2 over a plus b and 3 over a plus b. Box your final answer. All right. So, let's proceed. Okay, we have here 5x squared plus y over 3y times 3 over 4x minus y. Now, since our numerator here is a binomial, our denominator in our second fraction is also a binomial, so let's multiply the numerator by the numerator and denominator by the denominator okay so we have here 2x squared plus y okay enclose it in a parenthesis times 3 over Okay, we have here 3y times 4x minus y. Okay, all right. Now look at here. Okay, examine your um, expression. So you have here 2x squared plus y times 3 all over 3y times the quantity of 4x minus y. Now, looking at your factors, okay, you know that 3y here can be factored so that we can divide out 3. So, let's do that. So, we have 2x squared plus y times 3 all over, okay, Factor 3y. So you have 3 times y, right? Times 4x minus y. Okay? Now, we can already divide out common factor, which is 3. Okay? So continue... That would be equal now to 2x squared plus y over y times 4x minus y. Okay? Distribute y in your denominator. So you have 2x squared plus y over 4xy minus y squared and that's already your final answer okay. 
Now let's have our next example. We have 3D over 3F minus 12 times 4F minus 16 all over 12 A squared. Okay, now looking, inspecting your rational expressions. Okay, you know that 3F minus 12 has a common monomial factor and 4f minus 16 also has a common monomial factor okay so factoring them out let's have 3d okay over the factors of 3f minus 12 we have 3 times f minus 4 okay Multiply it by the other rational expression. We have 4f minus 16. Now we know that the common monomial factor for 4f minus 16 is 4. So we have 4 times f minus 4 over 12a squared. Now factors of 12, we can have it as 3 times 4 times 4 times a times a, right? Now, let's divide out common factors. So we have 4, uh, f minus 4 and f minus 4. We have here 3 and 3. And we also have 4 and 4. So we are left with, in our numerator, we are left with D over 3A times A. Simplify, you have D over 3A squared. And that's already our final answer. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to the next example. We have x squared minus 4 over 4 times 12x over 3x squared plus 6x. Okay. Now we know that when we multiply rational expressions, we should multiply numerator with a numerator and denominator with the denominator and then simplify however that way would take us a lot of time to do so we can just directly um factor okay our rational expressions the numerator and the, the denominator of our rational expressions okay so examining our x squared minus 4 over 4, examining the numerator, we know that x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. Okay? And the factors of x squared minus 4 are x plus 2 and x minus 2. Right? So, over... Now, let's proceed to the denominator. So, we have here 4. Now, okay, let's just use the prime factors of 4. So, we have here um, 2 times 2. Okay? Now, let's go to 12. x, 12x. Now, prime factors of 12x. So, we have here 3 times 4. And then x. 4, we have 2 times 2. 3 is prime, 2 is prime, and x. So the prime factors of 12x are 3 times 2 times 2 times x. Okay? 
Now, let's go to 3x squared plus 6x. Now, looking at this expression, we know that we can factor it by common monomial factor. And the common monomial factor of 3x squared and 6x is 3x, right? So, we will write 3x here. And then the other factor, okay, 3x squared divided by 3x, that is x, okay? And 6x divided by 3x, that is 2. So plus, so we have here, plus 2. Right? Now, okay, let's look at our factors. Now we have here that, we have here an expression that can still be factored, and that is 3x. So let's factor out 3x here in the denominator. So let's write again x plus 2 times x minus 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 times x over 2 times 2, okay, times 3 times x factors of 3x we have 3 times x okay times x plus 2 all right now that we have we are already done with our prime factors then we can already can uh, divide out common factors so we will start with x plus 2 and x plus 2. Next, we have a pair of 3, a pair of 2, another pair of 2, and a pair of x. Okay? So, there are no common factors anymore. So, let's continue. So, here... Okay, in our numerator, what is left is x minus 2. In the denominator, all of the factors are already divided out, so that would be equal to 1. So, our final answer is x minus 2. Box your final answer for emphasis. So, the product of x squared minus 4 over 4 and to 12x over 3x squared plus 6x is x minus 2. Okay. Now, next, let's have the last example, x squared minus 9 over 3x times x over x squared plus 9x plus 18, okay? Now here, okay, as instead of multiplying right away x squared minus 9 by x, okay, examine first your rational expressions, okay? Is there a numerator or denominator that is factorable? So let's try to see. Here we have x squared minus 9. Now, we know that x squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares again. So, the factors of, three, uh, of x squared minus 9 would be x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay? So, over... Okay, factors of 3x, we have 3 times x. Now, in our second rational expression, we have, okay, x here, so that, that x is prime, so just write x there, numerator. And the denominator, we have x squared plus 9x plus 18. Now, we notice that x squared plus 9x plus 18 is a quadratic trinomial, right? But, this is not a perfect square trinomial because 18 is not a perfect square. Therefore, this is a quadratic trinomial where a is equal to 1, right? Now, how to factor quadratic trinomials where a is equal to 1? Okay, let's have it here. 
Okay, for review. So we have your x squared plus 9x plus 18. Okay, so factoring this quadratic, quadratic trinomial where a is equal to 1, take the value of your c which is 18. Okay, so find the factors of 18. So factors of 18. We have here 18 can be equal to 9 times 2 and 6 times 3, right? Now, let's find the factors of 18 that when we add will give us positive 9. So that would definitely be 6 and 3. So, writing the factors, we will write it as x here. Square root of x squared is x. That's why we have x there. And since we are looking for the factors of 18, that when we add, will give us positive 9. So, our factors will be all positive. So, you have x plus 6 and x plus 3. So that's already the factors. Those are already the factors of x squared plus 9x plus 18. So let's write these factors in our solution here. So you have x plus 6 times x plus 3. Okay, let's erase this part. Okay. Now, since we have already done with listing all the prime factors, let's proceed now to, okay, dividing out common factors. So we have here x plus 3 and x plus 3. We have x and x. Okay, so there's no common factor anymore, so let's continue. We have here on our numerator, we are left with x minus 3. And in our denominator, we have 3 times x plus 6. Okay? Now distribute 3 in your denominator. So you have x minus 3 over 3x plus 18. And that's already our final answer. Alright, so that's all. Thank you. See you in our next videos.